It's been almost seven months since the first shuttle flight, but NASA hopes to reduce that turnaround time on future missions, cutting it eventually to a month or less between landing and launch. That's the whole purpose of these experiments. While we wait for this second flight to begin later this morning, let's look back quickly at the first flight and what it accomplished. Steve Young reports. The maiden flight of America's first space shuttle, Columbia, eventually would finish in a technological triumph, but it began with a whimper. Sixteen minutes before the scheduled launch, a problem cropped up with Columbia's sophisticated computer system. Astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen waited three hours while experts tried to sort it out, only to hear they would be earthbound a few days more. The launch director, George Page, and center director, Dick Smith, have just announced that we will scrub the launch attempt for today. The problem was that one of Columbia's five computers was comparing notes with the other four a fraction of a second out of step. Two days later, shuttle finally made it. Early television pictures revealed the cargo bay doors had opened properly. Good news because that allowed venting of heat into space. And what looked like bad news. About 15 heat shield tiles dislodged by the forces of blast off. For a while, it was feared Columbia's ability to come home had been impaired. But that turned out not to be the case. The mission lasted 54 and a half hours, a full 36 orbits of the Earth. Vice President Bush put in a call from the White House. I think your trip is just going to uh, ignite the excitement and the forward thinking from this country. So I really just wanted to call up and wish you the very best. Perhaps as many as a quarter of a million people crowded viewing sites on the Mojave Desert dry lake bed at Edwards Air Force Base, California, as the world's first reusable spacecraft prepared to land. Columbia, you're really looking good, right on the money. Columbia came into view of chase planes, glided without engine power over the landing area, and with only one chance to land, touched the Earth and coasted to a stop. One, touchdown. America had something to cheer about. As for world reaction, the French newspaper Le Figaro wrote, our friends, the Americans, needed a big technological success, and they've got one. And rookie astronaut Robert Crippen said, I think we're back in the space business to stay, and I think myself and all my compatriots are going to get many more opportunities to fly. The ICE inspection team is at the mobile platform to check on the external tank for the space shuttle. ICE, you may recall, was believed to have caused some of the tile damage on Space Shuttle 1 as it uh, settled down from the external tank at, uh, at liftoff. So a team is up there right at the tip of the external tank, which is the dominant uh, thing in your picture at the moment. The two solid fuel rockets off to either side. You can see the tank very clearly, the orbiter on, uh, well, you can just see a, a tiny port of the orbiter, but the main thing is this ice inspection team is right up at the tip, checking out just to make sure that the uh, ice isn't building up there and causing the same kind of problem for the tiles, potentially, as was caused on the, the first space shuttle. Our CBS News coverage of the effort to get uh, the space shuttle Columbia up this morning will continue after these messages. At the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, you can see uh, dawn now uh, is progressing right along. A few scattered clouds, but the weather is uh, no problem here. Dawn through the trees. I never see this shot that I don't think uh, this, of course, one time was very active Indian country here in northern Florida. Uh, what uh, some wandering Indian might think if he came out of that brush now and saw this uh, countdown clock. You can see the wind blowing uh, the American flag just to the left of your screen there, the wind picking up a little, but not enough to be a problem. And three and a half miles out behind this countdown clock, we're in a one-hour hold now, a designed one-hour hold. Don't be misled by that two hours and five minutes, uh, which is the official countdown clock time. But our launch time is still scheduled for uh, 10 o'clock this morning, Eastern time, nine in the central time zone, and uh, around seven o'clock out west. The uh, ice crew is up at the very top of the external tank, checking out for ice. Now, this 
Uh, Bonnie Dunbar, you were saying there's a what's called a beanie cap up here. Could you explain that to me briefly? Well, that's correct. Uh, as you recall, on the first mission, we were concerned about ice forming on the exterior of the external tank and possibly dislodging and uh, damaging tiles on the bottom of the orbiter. And if you recall back in the days of Apollo and watched a launch, you would see a lot of ice shaking off the vehicle. Well, the cold liquid oxygen, which is well below 200 degrees Fahrenheit, contributes to that ice formation if it's bending out of the top. There is a, a natural vent out of the top there. If it's flowing down over the vehicle, it, it really accelerates that ice formation. So what we're doing is we've got a little cap there, we've got some suction lines in, an, in essence, and we're just pulling the gas out and bending it on the other side of the launch pad. Leo Krupp, uh, Rockwell International, uh, the overall contractor, the builder of this uh, enormously complicated uh, spacecraft. Uh, do you know offhand who designed that, that beanie cap? I mean, it, it's so easy to describe it. It sounds simple, but a lot of very intelligent people had to design that. Before you do so, uh, let's go to the suit-up room. These are live pictures in the suit-up room as the uh, astronauts uh, are being suited up. They've had their breakfast now. They've been in the suit-up room for, oh, 15 or uh, 20 minutes. Uh, putting on these uh, spacesuits. Leo Krupp, uh, we'll get back to the question I asked you uh, uh, in a moment, but these are the same kinds of flight suits uh, that pilots in uh, our more sophisticated fixed-wing aircraft wear. The SR-71 is using that suit and the same ejection seat that we're using. Let's pick up the voice of NASA control. They are in the suiting room and the biomedical sensors have been All right, after a pause bodies, for station identification, we'll go to New York for CBS News Morning, but we'll be here frequently in the broadcast with all the latest shuttle updates. Until then, this is Dan Rather, CBS News at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida.